In today's video, I'm going to talk about how the White Walkers planned to acquire a dragon from the very first episode, how they managed to do it in Season 7 Episode 6, Beyond the Wall, why, and what it means. Before I begin, I should point out that I'm not sure this theory holds any indication as to why the White Walkers want to move south, only that they do. In the very first scene of the very first episode, a scene often touted as one of the most important, we see three characters ranged north of the wall. Sir Waymar Royce, a ranger, originally from one of the Vale's more important houses, Garrod, a seasoned ranger, and Will, who's been in the watch for four years. In this scene, it somewhat looks to me like something of a trap has been set up for this ranging party. They seem to be lured up by information about wildlings, presented with the frozen corpses of said wildlings, and then two out of the three men were killed, with one seemingly allowed to flee. The scene pans out a little differently in the books, much to the same effect. The noteworthy thing here is that it was Waymar Royce who was killed first, and that one ranger was allowed to flee. Based on what we've already seen of the others, we can safely assume they would have killed all three if that was their intention. But I don't think it was. There is an established theory amongst Game of Thrones fans that the others killed Waymar Royce because they suspected him to be the prince that was promised. I won't go into this theory in detail, save to say it makes some degree of sense. Waymar was shown to be wearing much finer clothing than his fellow rangers, as well as being described somewhat similarly to a more familiar potential candidate for the prophecy, Jon Snow. I believe it is quite likely the others thought Sir Waymar to be Jon Snow, or more specifically, the prince that was promised. Prophetical red herrings are somewhat common throughout the story, so it makes sense that the others could also make such mistakes. One example of a similar red herring is Cersei Lannister's interpretation of the Maggie the Frog prophecy, where a younger, more beautiful queen shall cast her down and take all she holds dear. Cersei believes this to be Marjorie Tyrell. This is Cersei's red herring. We can make a similar parallel with Stannis Baratheon, another candidate for the prophecy who ended up being led beyond the wall. Cersei's is but one example, there are many more. Needless to say, prophecies are tricky to both men and others alike, it might seem. Why would the others wish to lure the prince that was promised beyond the wall? For a few reasons, I suspect. The prince that was promised is prophesied, of course, to end the long night, a reason in and of itself to want to take him out of the equation. But more importantly, they can't move past the wall to come and get him. Their only recourse is to lure him northwards. Another, more important reason as to why the Night King and the others would wish to lure the prince that was promised northwards was that they needed a dragon to cross the wall, and the prince that was promised is prophesied to awaken dragons from stone. We're told time and time again that the wall protects the realms of men with magic, this is clearly important. If this is true, and we have no reason to believe otherwise, it stands to reason that the only way to pass the wall is with magical assistance. It is also commonly known that dragons are magic. Stannis explicitly says this when he outlines how Aegon the Conqueror managed to conquer the Seven Kingdoms with a smaller army than his foes. It is also probably not a coincidence that the awakening of the White Walkers and the awakening of the dragons happens around the same time, not uh, years apart, for example. It's almost as if there were a wider awakening of magic, triggering the beginning of the story, the Song of Ice and Fire. To jump to the end of Season 7, we see another prince that was promised, this one a more literal prince, travel beyond the wall against all sensible judgment for reasons that are entirely questionable. In fact, this was a particularly widespread criticism of how Season 7 ended. A lot of it just didn't seem to make sense. Or did it? Let's not forget that Sir Waymar Royce was also advised not to head towards the others. He also ignored that same advice. History might not repeat itself, 
but it often rhymes, is a mantra often used to describe the events of Game of Thrones, and here we see the echoes in the story, the patterns in the prophecy. Here's how I believe the Night King aimed to trap Jon Snow for the purposes of securing a dragon, so he might destroy and thusly move beyond the wall, which has kept him closed out of the realms of men for thousands of years. First, it is quite possible that many of the visions seen in the flames are not from any Lord of Light, but from the Night King himself. Jon Snow even glances upon this when he asks Beric Dondarrion, what's the point in serving a god if we don't know what he wants? The more important point here is in the uncertainty of divine messages. When Stannis and Melisandre look into the flames after their defeat at the Battle of Blackwater, they're shown a battle in the snow, a vision which ultimately leads them beyond the wall. The Hound looks into the flames at the beginning of Season 7, only to see another vision which again ultimately leads him beyond the wall with Jon. So there's a couple of patterns here, mostly in how the others seem to communicate into the realms of men. The first being with death, and the other being with fire. Although the method by which the others operate is not of massive importance, since we're only ever exposed to anything the others do in the smallest of shards, the most elusive of clues, any of which could be easily misinterpreted, what really matters is that they seem to be somewhat successful in what they set out to do. Another piece of evidence that a dragon trap has been set is in Season 7, Episode 5, where Bran walks into Crows to scout beyond the wall. He finds the Night King, only for the Night King to break Bran out of his warging state. The Night King clearly did not want Bran to see. But what did Bran see? If you look closely, you'll see the Night King and his army at the very same rock in the very same valley where Jon and his team were trapped in Episode 6 Beyond the Wall. I think Bran walked in on the Night King setting his trap. Maybe the Night King was weakening the ice over the lake so that he could chase Jon onto the rock and thusly break the ice with the weight of the whites around him. Admittedly, that's what he seemed to do in practice. It would also explain as to why Gendry was allowed to escape. If you notice, the valley into which Gendry escapes, it's later consumed with whites, leading me to believe Gendry was allowed to escape. He was allowed to escape with the express purpose of summoning a dragon to rescue, or in a less ideal case, avenge Jon Snow. Again, if this was the plan, it did indeed come to fruition perfectly so. This also isn't massively dissimilar to how a ranger was allowed to flee from the very first scene of the very first episode I talked about earlier. And of course, yet another potential candidate for the prince that was promised prophecy was lured beyond the wall, Daenerys Targaryen. At this point, it seems if there's one thing the Night King is rather adept at, it's luring people, specifically princes or princesses, beyond the wall against their better judgement. Even Tyrion advises Daenerys against going northward, not dissimilar to how Sir Waymar Royce was discouraged by Jared, and not unlike how Jon was discouraged by Tormund, among others. We must be open to the possibility, if not the probability, that the Night King is a highly adept tactician and master manipulator. It's easy to paint those we don't understand, or those different from us, as less adept, but it's a mistake to be made at our peril, without doubt a lesson sewn into the pages of this very story. Many people wonder as to why the Night King chose to throw his spear at Viserion, as he was both a flying target and further away from him than Drogon. Why not just spear Drogon if he wanted a dragon? For me, this is why. There are two kinds of others. We have the Whites, who are resurrected from dead humans and animals. The key distinction here is that they were dead. The second of these ice creatures seems to have originated from the living, as illustrated at the end of Season 4, Episode 4, where the Night King effectively turns a living human child into a White Walker. If we take this into account when looking at the dragons, the Night King 
may not have intended to kill a dragon, but rather temporarily paralyze one. He would have wanted to paralyze one so that rather the dragon becoming undead, it would become a white walker, a living other. This would explain why Viserion was targeted in flight, why it was clipped at the base of the wing, and why it crashed into the frozen lake. If Viserion had landed as Drogon was at the time, the ice would have not been broken and Viserion would not have been paralyzed. This might also explain as to why the Night King seemed to wait until Drogon was in flight before targeting him. If Drogon had been speared while grounded, he most likely would have not been taken out of action. We actually see this as Drogon was injured in a similar way at the Field of Fire earlier in the series, proving that being clipped in the wing does not completely disable a dragon. This might also be a clue as to the possibility that the prince that was promised might be a secondary concern to the Night King next to obtaining a dragon and crossing the wall to achieve his goal, which as of yet seems to be unknown, although something tells me substantial clues have been dropped which might have been missed by just about everyone. The prince that was promised was prophesied to wake dragons from stone. The Night King capturing Jon Snow and his companions arguably awoken dragons from Dragonstone. It's a slightly different take on the prophecy, but a workable explanation as to why the prince that was promised is essential to the Night King's plan, and why a number of these prophetical candidates have found themselves beyond the wall. It is outlined frequently that we don't know what the Lord of Light wants. For all we know, any vision in any flame could be at the voice of the Night King, including the voices heard or the vision seen by Varys in his story. Overall, I believe this theory offers something of an explanation as to some of the patterns we see throughout the story and why certain characters sometimes act in the ways we don't understand or that don't make sense. In short, the Night King was after a dragon from the start, and in time, he acquired one despite all opposition. Let me know your thoughts on this theory in the comments section below. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.